Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good morning, uh, good afternoon to a few folks out there. It is the Earth Master here on this beautiful Sunday, April 23rd, 2023. It is about 4.23 p.m. here, or uh, a.m., excuse me, 10.45 a.m. <laughs> Goodness, uh, yeah, it's a beautiful day, let me tell you, though. End of the weekend, hope everyone's definitely enjoying their... Uh, Days off. All right, latest earthquake out here on the globe shows a 1.3 into the area of the West Coast. Uh, did see a little bit of activity ramping up here across the globe over the last 24 hours, but uh, let's jump into the space weather activity currently happening. We are expecting a uh, potential G2 class storm coming in. Uh, I was just looking at the space weather data right now. And it looks like the KP index is stretching up around the 5 range, which is a G1 class storm. This was predicted first, kind of a, a brunt, a first bump of the system uh, before a little bit stronger impulse comes in a little bit later today and into tonight to create those G2 storming conditions. Uh, the current real-time solar wind data here uh, from the uh, Space Weather Prediction Center shows a uh, what looks like a brunt first passage of this uh, CME that we're expecting. Also, the BZ, uh, BTBZ component is tilting south, allowing a lot of this solar wind stream uh, to affect the areas of the upper atmosphere a lot more so than uh, if this was stabilized. So that could be some good news from for Aurora watchers later today um, once it gets dark. We got density peaking up here as well. Notice this graph. Uh, also, the speed ramping up around the 550 range. That's a, a pretty good sign of the uh, of a first bump of the uh, solar, uh, that CME that's supposed to reach us here um, a little bit later. The uh, sto uh, solarham.net site showing about the same thing here. KP index right around the 5. Unfortunately for us here on the sunlit side of the Earth, uh, well, obviously we're not going to be able to see that, right? But if you are uh, down or uh, over on the unlit side, uh, talking about areas around Russia and uh, you know, it looks like it's just starting to go into the Iceland and the Greenland area. Uh, but again, this is all lit up. So unfortunately, this is bad timing for now. I'm hoping that this will continue into the evening time period uh, for the uh, folks here on this area of the world but we'll watch that uh, again i think this is just the first uh, arrival we were expecting a, a little bump here four to five on the kp index as expected the g2 class storm is supposed to be between zero and uh, 600 utc time that's later today uh, current utc time as you can see here on the graph is uh going to be 423 1748 so roughly here um a little bit later on, late afternoon, early evening time period is when we're expecting to see the, the arrival, the, the brunt of it, so to speak, uh, from this CME that's uh, been Earth-directed from a... It was a full Halo CME, Earth-directed. And um, yeah, we'll definitely uh, keep an eye on that and see if this uh, turns into something awesome. But for now, the auroras on the uh, dark side here of the uh, Earth... These folks may be uh, in for a little treat over here. If you got dark, clear skies, looks like a pretty good chance of auroras kicking up there and also down in Antarctica, but I'm not for sure how many people are down there in this section of the world. Probably not too many. All right, uh, these guys are stating uh, the same thing. The Discover Solar Wind data is showing a shock passage. There's another word for it. Shock passage at 1700 UTC time. Um, and this should be the expected CME reaching the satellite. The solar wind speed is currently near 500. Um, the BZ component of the interplanetary magnetic field continues to point south, which is good. That will allow um, some heightened activity uh, for the uh, solar storming conditions there. So we'll continue to watch that. Right now, let's see, any flaring going on? Doesn't look like it. 90% uh, chance for a C flare. M flare at 25% chance. X flare at one and a look at the magnetic structures as we always do every day. Well, <clears throat> about only uh, two sunspots here that pose any uh, 
a potential of flaring and that's going to be this departing sunspot here on the western limb and also this regional sunspot down here that looks a little bit disorganized today more so than yesterday so it looks like that may be um, well getting pretty uh, stable in terms of the magnetic structure within the within this sunspot but uh, we'll continue to watch it not a huge threat for any flaring going on just this uh, CME arrival that is uh, coming in right now and uh, it should amp up here slightly as we head into the uh, late afternoon early evening time period but I don't know I think it's arriving a little bit early for us here on this side of the earth which may not be the best news here uh, to see the auroras but hey we'll definitely uh, keep our fingers crossed maybe we can see that there at the northern tier states and also of course into the uh, canada region alaska as well all right uh let's see earthquake activity anything else going on here across the big island of hawaii well let's check it out and see what we got a uh, little bit of movement from this morning most of this activity around kilauea volcano has been uh from yesterday there's not a whole lot of new movement here to report over the uh last um 24 hours or so but uh let's see i think that we had that 4.2 downgrade to 4.1 that uh earthquake triggered a little swarm here does not look like it's affected anything yet at the kilauea volcano but hey uh, we'll continue to watch that as the swarms have been coming and going as they please uh latest activity here that's kind of odd just jumped off of there uh, did have a 5.0 into the Kermadec Trench one hour ago. That's why it jumped off. Uh, it's 10 kilometers deep. Also a little previous earthquake here about 40 minutes prior to that 5-pointer. 4.9. Relatively shallow earthquake activity. Uh, still watching this region here along the Kermadec Trench into New Zealand potentially for some activity. Uh, we'll definitely keep that spot in mind. It is filling in slightly along this trench area. Seismic gap zone today, of course, around the Solomon Islands and uh, portions of Papua New Guinea, but I'm not really too concerned about this area. Uh, most of the brunt of the movement has been centered over here around the Philippines and uh, kind of towards the, uh, the South China Sea here along this plate boundary. USGS reporting 1, 5.2, but uh, it looks as though there's a little bit more activity here in this mix, uh, which is also shown some threes and whatnot. Uh, within this area roughly surrounding uh, a good portion of the Philippines 5.3 there as well from this morning 34 kilometers deep further down south uh, not a whole lot above the 4.5 threshold but as you can see it's still very active across this area of the Maluka Sea and areas around the uh, Indonesia Islands area 3.0 coming in right now as we speak and a 2.7 so this whole area is really ramping up today. Uh, movement around the Java Trench that we seen yesterday has come to a halt. Uh, we did have a pretty good swarm of activity here. Oh, yesterday, but uh, nothing kicking up since then. This area further south around the Java Trench uh, remains somewhat quiet as well. A little, little bit of further movement once we get back building over here uh, towards the east on these plate boundaries. Uh, not a whole lot through the Kuro Kamachaka or the Japan Trench. A couple smaller quakes being listed here along the Japan Trench, but nothing big. One earthquake here at the very northern end of the Kuro Kamachaka Trench, 10 kilometers deep for a 4.3. Alaska area, well, a few earthquakes out here. Um, nothing major going on, just some twos and threes. Uh, let's see, checked out the Big Island. Let's jump over here first to the... Uh, Areas around a Pakistan, seeing a 4.8 fairly recent earthquake, 39 kilometers deep there for this area. And around Turkey and the Mediterranean all looks uh, very typical. And quite a few aftershocks there in the Turkey region continuing uh, from uh, those earthquakes there a while back. Pretty large ones. So that activity could no doubt continue for months, if not years. South America region, one earthquake being listed, a 4.2. A couple other smaller quakes there on the EMSC model, some threes being reported. Across the middle of America trench, a couple fours as well. Puerto Rico, let's see what we got going on here across the Puerto Rico area. 
Uh, most of this movement here was from yesterday. We did have a couple other twos and threes overnight, uh, but it looks as though things may be tapering off here around the Puerto Rico Trench. Either way, still keep an eye on this area. It's been showing elevated movement around the Puerto Rico Trench area. One earthquake out here in the New Madrid zone of the states, out around the Tennessee area, 2.1 coming in. Early this morning, it looks like around 3 o'clock, Oklahoma uh, got a couple of smaller earthquakes from yesterday and today as well. Nothing major going on across this area of the country. Some twos down here into the uh, oil fields as well, western Texas. Uh, nothing showing up here across Yellowstone, but uh, there was a little bit of activity I seen this morning. I was looking at uh, some activity over here along the eastern section of the park. Uh, Notice this little spike here on the graph showed up uh, pretty nicely across a good portion of the eastern section of Yellowstone National Park. Not so much over here. Um, hard to say exactly where this was at. It looks like it may have been pinpointed somewhere around the Parker Peak area or Lake Butte. Uh, probably at least a 2, maybe a 2.1 on the magnitude scale. But nothing being reported by the USGS. It may be uh, Monday when they get to that. Up into the Pacific Northwest, not a whole lot. One lonesome earthquake up here outside of Seattle, uh, 1.9. A low activity up here in northeastern California, very extreme northeastern outside of Alturas, 1.2 and a 0.3 uh, in the uh, Warner Mountains. Nothing going on across the uh, Cascadia subduction zone for now. Tremor activity does remain elevated. We'll check that out tonight once they put out the daily update. Uh, the Cobb Mountain area is going to be the Clear Lake Volcanic Field, somewhat active today, uh, and more so within the last hour, it looks like. Uh, Cal Calpine hydrothermal operations out here all over the place. There's, there's numerous uh, of these facilities that create uh, energy. Uh, there's a whole process involved by injecting uh, some substance below the surface. And it um, looks fairly active today across this area where all these hydrothermal plants are. Right further down south, Bay Area, fairly quiet. Um, there's not a whole lot of activity ramping up right now in California, aside from this movement up north into the uh, Cobb Mountain area. Uh, 2.5 map and above. Uh, only has one earthquake here near the Hollister area this morning, a 2.7. Uh, just off the Calaveras Fault Zone. But aside from that, just very minimal activity across the state of California today. All microquakes. Uh, let's see. Let me check uh, New Zealand. See what we have going on here across the area of the uh, folks here. Looks like um, go to the all magnitudes. Over, I'm just looking over the last hour. It shows a 5.1 here along the Kermadec Trench. That's going to be uh, this earthquake up here. A little bit of a discrepancy there from the on the magnitude. USGS reporting that at 5.0, but uh, looks like local activity around New Zealand fairly quiet. Uh, quick glance at the earthquake drums here. Uh, doesn't show a whole lot of movement across New Zealand today. All right, uh, let's see what else. Anything else missing out here? The Atlantic Ocean, uh, goodness, pretty quiet out here. This has been one of our major quiet zones, so I'm sure eventually this will continue. Uh, at some to uh, some point, we do get uh, some swarms out here and an occasional six along these uh, divergent boundary zones. But uh, it's been awfully, awfully quiet out here recently. More so than normal. All right, uh, let's see. Yep, so a couple areas to watch today with this back building of activity. It looks as though we're, we're getting into that brick wall again where the momentum and earthquake activity is just back building along this plate boundary with very minimal uh, progression here. But, you know, we did see this activity yesterday that has since halted. Um, I still think there's possibility of some larger scale movement here across the Java Trench and the Sumatra area, considering this type of setup that we witnessed here uh, quite a few times over the last couple weeks. We'll get all this momentum of earthquake activity. Um, in an occasional swarm drifting around the plate boundary here of the Java Trench. And uh, it just comes to a halt again and then back builds along this area. I still think we're um, capable of seeing a, a much larger magnitude quake here off the coast of Sumatra. Just uh, 
Note note that today. Uh, let's see what else is there. I think that's about it. Uh, just kind of the big story is going to be this uh, this uh, space weather event. You know, it's uh, it's hard to say exactly who's going to see the auroras and whatnot. Um, and depending on if this is going to be an early arrival event, uh, if so. Then uh, it's not going to be too visible over here across the uh, states or or Canada, just due to the fact that it's uh, well. There's that big ball of fire in the sky, right? Well, in space, that's uh, lighting up our atmosphere. Not going to be visible over here, so we'll keep an eye on it. Um, we'll cover this a little bit later on this evening as it gets uh, a little bit darker. Until then, um, hope everyone has a great day. No. Uh, Nothing major going on here on this end, as far as my schedule goes. I'm probably just going to get outside and uh, do a little bit more yard work. And uh, see how see how the day goes, I guess. It's supposed to be 80, 86 again today. It was a little warm yesterday. Uh, but coming up, man, goodness, we got some temperatures warming up into the mid-90s. Severe weather potential today, that's why I forgot to cover. Mostly looks like extreme southern Texas down there into the Brownsville area. And uh, they're underneath the enhanced area. Uh, so the enhanced area gives it a 2% chance for tornadoes. Most of this is going to be some, bit, uh, some wind and some large hail uh, down there around the Brownsville, Texas area. But it's very limited today. There's not a whole lot of... Uh, severe weather potential taken off today um but i'm sure that's going to change as we head into uh you know late spring and uh, in the may may can be a very very active month for severe weather out here in this area of the country so we'll keep that uh in check or we'll keep that on our updates all right guys have yourself a beautiful day enjoy the sunshine if you don't have any sunshine out there definitely uh you could probably make some of your own right i would say so there's always ways to cheer up the day it doesn't have to always be gloomy and doomy but hey you know what i like those cloudy overcast days on occasions pretty nice but i think i'm a little bit ready for some sunshine out here along the west coast and warmer temperatures considering that uh, crazy wet winter we've had have a good one, guys. We'll catch you a little bit later on tonight. Take care.